Welcome to Module 5 of MBL Academy. This module focuses on the treatment of MBL producing bacterial infections. We will examine both primary and alternative treatment options in accordance with the European Society of Clinical Microbiology and Infectious Diseases or ESCMID guidelines. These recommendations emphasise the importance of rapid diagnostics and combination therapy particularly for multidrug resistant gram-negative infections, including those caused by MBL-producing organisms. Let's begin with carbapenem-resistant Enterobacteriales, including Kebsiella pneumoniae, Escherichia coli, and Enterobacter species. The primary treatment for these bacteria involves combining azetrianam with either ceftazidime, avibactam, or cefidrocol. Avibactam protects azotrianam from being broken down by enzymes like those produced by MBL producing bacteria, allowing azotrianam to remain effective in targeting the infection. Cefidrocol, on the other hand, is designed to penetrate MBL producing bacteria and help azotrianam reach its target site. By overcoming resistance mechanisms, Cefidrocol and Avibactam allow azotrianam to work more effectively against MBL producing bacteria enhancing the overall treatment. Sometimes first-line treatment may not be suitable for a patient. This could be because of allergies, conditions preventing its use, treatment failure or a high risk of failure. In this case, an alternative may be needed. A combination of two antibiotics, such as polymyxins, aminoglycosides or fosfomycin, can be used to treat carbapenem-resistant Enterobacteriales but only for severe infections where lab tests in vitro susceptibility show these are the only antibiotics likely to work or when beta-lactamase inhibitor combinations are not available. Next, let's explore treatment options for difficult to treat Pseudomonas aeruginosa. The primary therapy involves a combination of two of the following, polymyxins, aminoglycosides or phosphomycin. However, polymyxins and aminoglycosides should be used cautiously due to their potential renal toxicity. Dose adjustments may be required to limit this. Finally, let's focus on carbapenem-resistant Acinetobacter baumannii. The primary treatment in Europe for this infection involves a high dose of ampicillin solbactam. However, an alternative treatment could consist of polymyxin or high-dose tigicycline for infections caused by solbactam-resistant, carbapenem-resistant Acinetobacter baumannii, or a combination therapy with two of the following agents, polymyxin, aminoglycosides, tigicycline or solbactam. It is crucial to monitor the patient's response to the therapy and check for the following signs. Is the patient showing signs of improvement? Is the patient showing signs of further deterioration? Is the patient able to tolerate the drug? If the drug is known for renal toxicity, is the patient's renal function adequate? If the patient is not improving or showing signs of intolerance or renal toxicity, or another crucial side effect, it's important to evaluate whether the treatment is suitable or if the patient may require an alternative therapy. Infection prevention and control are essential in stopping MBL resistance. These key measures help combat its spread. Hand hygiene. Follow the World Health Organization's My Five Moments of the Hand Hygiene Approach. This can be found in our resources section. Surveillance. Screen high-risk patients on hospital admission. Contact precautions. Use gloves, gowns, dedicated equipment and limit patient movement. Patient isolation. Place infected patients in single rooms or cohort them. Environmental cleaning. Use effective disinfectants, especially in high-risk areas. Inter-facility communication. Ensure clear communication when transferring patients. Education and training. Provide ongoing IPC training and compliance monitoring. Now, we're going to look at a patient case study. Phil has suffered severe trauma from a road traffic accident 15 days ago. He's in a medically induced coma and on mechanical ventilation. Phil is showing signs he's developed an infection. 
He's running a fever and has increased respiratory secretions. Sam pulls a sense to the laboratory. Phil's chest x-ray showed new infiltrates. Time to devise a treatment plan. What would you suggest? Empiric antibiotic treatment of piperacillin tazobactam was initiated as soon as ventilator-associated pneumonia was suspected, after cultures were taken, of course. The cultures show resistance to carbapenems and most beta-lactams. Thinking about Phil's risk factors that you wrote down earlier, do you think that MBL production could be responsible for the resistance? The isolates from the samples are tested for MBL production. What tests could the laboratory use to do this? Think back to module four. MBL production is confirmed by the phenotypic double disc synergy test. Genotypic tests to confirm and determine the causative gene are performed. The antibiotic susceptibility testing indicated that the Pseudomonas aeruginosa isolate was susceptible to cifadrocol. So this therapy was started. Infection prevention and control is critical in keeping this multidrug resistant infection from spreading to other ICU patients. And there you have it. You have now completed the fifth module of the MBL Academy series exploring treatment options for MBL producing bacteria. Be sure to take the assessment and put your knowledge to the test.